Hello everybody and welcome to another painting guide. So today we're going to be painting Blood Angels for Legions Imperialis. I wanted to go down a bit of a grim dark vibe just like my 30k equivalent and uh, so first off I undercoated it Chaos Black. After this as you can see I decided to do some zenithal highlighting of uh, white. In this case I use Vallejo Primer White because it's quite thin and goes on quite well. My airbrush is playing up a little bit in this video so um, bear with me. So yeah, this is the equivalent of pre-shading for my army. Now, um, obviously you can do it a lot better in Heresy, uh, and you can do it a lot finer. And as you can see on this uh, Storm Eagle, you can go down into the centre of the panels and make them a bit brighter, so it's a bit more shaded towards the edges of the plat panels. Right, you get right in there. You can skip this stage completely and just go straight to Mephiston Red as a spray paint. And then, you know, cover over with the Angron Clear Red a bit later in the video because from that stage really it's where it starts getting a bit grim darky. So um, I suppose this is more for people who like to pre-shade. After this you give it a nice liberal dry brush of white, just so it goes right on the edges. Gives a bit of extra natural highlighting. And what I really recommend uh, now, after trying them for the first time this year, is makeup brushes. You can get them nice and cheap, like this one. Give a good old dry off screen. And then give it a good old once over, just like that. So there you go, you can see all the raised edges are getting caught. Yeah, and then just keep going until you're happy. And then uh, that'll be all the uh, pre-shading done. And here you can see it a bit better on a bigger plane. There we go. Nice and pre-shaded. Delightful. And then we grab this. A nice old contrast ball red. And then we head back downstairs to the airbrush station, load the ball red into the hopper of the airbrush, and give it a good old reddening. Contrast paints do work really well through an airbrush, so uh, I never actually need to thin them or anything like that either. And look, there goes my hand right in the middle of the screen. Can't see anything. And what airbrush do I use? I use basically a £13 cheap airbrush, nothing special. Many minutes later we've now finished with that colour and we're moving on to the Angron Clear Red. So I only start this stage when the models are completely dry. You can see at the top corner there I've got a Storm Eagle which is still slightly wet from the Baal Red. But um, that's fine, I'm not doing that one right now. So we do a nice little coat of this Angron Clear Red all over. And you can do it by brush if you really want. You can see in this picture here I've actually got one of my Sycorins which I did for the community article and I didn't pre-shade as much that time. So you can see how important pre-shading actually is. The rest of this video will concentrate on this little single rhino here. So then we paint the model. So bulk and metal for the silver areas, um, black, Vallejo black, I think I used for the, uh, the black areas, a bit of gold here and there as well. And then from there, we are going to use gloss varnish, the Vallejo one, to go over the areas where we'll be applying transfers to. Just those areas, nowhere else. And then we add our transfers. There they are. See just there on top. And there's a big old number nine on the back door as well. There it is. Then seal them in place using another coat of uh, Vallejo gloss varnish before applying two coats of Pledge multi surface wax. Uh, as you can see there, it looks a bit cloudy, but it dries completely clear and uh, it's really good stuff. It used to actually be clear which is the one which um, you can see in the old Ford Rod Masterclass books. Just make sure you let one of the layers dry before you start a second layer. And just remember to hit every single place on the entire model, even the transfers. And here it is, nice and dry and uh, looking yeah, very, very clean, like it's just come out of the forge. But we don't want that. We want it to look like it's come through hell and back especially the Siege of Terror approaching. If you really, really wanted to, you could take a scalpel to the uh, transfers where they cut across the lines, but I don't think you really notice it at this scale, so I'm not bothered. I do it on the big ones, but not on these. So let's talk about oil buffs. So uh, when I do my big models, I use a combination of these two paints, Just mix them together with a bit of a odorless white spirits. Now in the past I did use some artists um, white spirits but I stopped using that because it got a bit expensive and so I moved on to this cheaper low odor white spirits and uh, 
to make sure you do well when you're using it you are using it in a well ventilated area even though it's low odor as with most people who like weathering uh, they've probably got quite a few of the old ak interactive range of um, weathering mixes so these are all weathering enamels and the mixture i've been using for this is the four all vehicle ones on the left hand side for the look i'm trying to achieve though it's a bit too thin and also it's a bit too um bit too brown so what i did was get a small amount of lamp black from my oil paint tube mix that around on the palette with the ak interactive streaking grime and you get a nice grimy browny black too much oil paint will make the mixture very very thick which is something you don't really want but also you don't want it too too thin either and then we get our little tank and start covering it in this mixture now i know some people have a little mini panic attack when they do this for the first time but yeah just trust in the method cover it all over even the tracks and i would suggest wearing gloves at this point because it's a bit of a nightmare to get off your hands now you can get these quite easily and cheap on uh, online many different online retailers and there we go liberally covering it as you can see and then when it is fully covered you're going to want to put it down and leave it but um, what you want to do is leave it till it gets to a point where it's pretty much just barely tacky so this sort of look right here there you go so you pick it up it's really shine so it's like 90% dry or 95% dry you see not much moisture there and that's where this technique practice makes perfect so um it's quite forgiving as well because obviously you put two different layers or three different layers of uh, sealant on it in places and so as you can see just off picture there we have got a bit of white spirits so i'm using a small fine detail brush i load it up as you can see i'm going to start dabbing it on so as you put it on you'll notice that the red starts coming back and it's always a good idea to have a bit of tissue to one side so you're almost wiping off the residue you are taking away onto the tissue because otherwise you're just wiping the residue back on and on soft cotton wool buds help here as well and what you can do is you can load one of the ends up with a bit of white spirits and have the other one nice and dry now you can have some which are quite waxed tipped and uh, they're not as good as the ones which sort of split open a bit more because they you sort of take away a lot more of the residue than the more waxed tipped ones so it's one of these things where you'll start like noticing which ones you prefer as you go out there and buy them um, the other thing you can use as you can see me right now i'm using some tissue paper just to wipe and dab it off now it is the equivalent of using um, uh, an old piece of cotton sheet to do a big old um, uh, rub and buff for uh, the bigger scale models so uh, tissue does work really well in this instance and as you can see back to the brush and you can start flooding white spirits onto the uh, areas as well and it will start taking the uh, the residue of the oil paint into the recesses there you go you can buff that little bit off there but tease it into the uh, crevices like so and then just Bam, bam bam and slowly pull it away and as you gain experience you'll notice yourself quickly jumping between techniques you'll even start using your uh, finger as well yeah ever since i started using this oil buff technique i am um, pretty much try to embrace it as much as possible on most of my models and uh, i think it it can be really effective and it's very forgiving it's just taking that initial step to actually be brave enough to just get on it. Um, it's probably one of the hardest steps. The pigments in oil paints are actually a lot finer than the pigments in acrylics. So it, it can be a really, really smooth finish. As you can see here, I'm messing around with the bolts. And I can take a bit of it off and put it back on. And slowly manipulate it till I get to a point where I think, yeah, that looks good. And then pure white spirits. Just to bring it back up to a more vibrant red and then you just keep hopping around the model until it's done now best not to do it with uh, bare fingers as I said earlier but mainly because you end up getting fingerprints which just really really 
really ruins the look of the model. The other great thing about this technique is you can actually do uh, streaks. Now, um, obviously, certain areas like the corners of these uh, window slits are viewports. You're going to want a bit of um, grime running off of them. So you can use pure white spirits to clean the central, central bits and then uh, manipulate it so that it looks like there's streaks of uh, grime coming down from the edges of the window ports. If you're feeling particularly brave, you could even have it coming down from some bolts here and there. wouldn't recommend doing it from every single part of the entire model because obviously it's a well-maintained military vehicle, but an uh, occasional one here and there looks good. And then onto the side of the tank. So we're going to clear up that Blood Angel logo as well. And we go back to the brush as well to flood certain areas with white spirits before bringing them back up with extra bits of oil if we really need to by grabbing it from somewhere else on the model. And then onto the rear of the model. Now this is another great place where you can do lots of streaks, which is what I'm trying to do here. So as, a, as before, give a bit of a smear off, or buff off. And then hopefully this will focus a bit. Yeah, white spirits, vertical. And as you can see, starting to get the streaks. Nice and easy, really easy. And there's the finished tank. Now at this stage you can add certain things like a bit of weathering powder to the tracks to make it look complete. But obviously that's all based on your battle zone. So if you want to use rubble, go for rubble powders. And if you want to use mud, go for muds. So it's always quite good to keep a um, keep it in line with the model and keep it so it actually complements it. And as you can see, we've uh, still got the red, the vibrant red, which we initially spray painted up until we start adding character with this weathering technique. Now it's always up to you how grimy you want it. So here you go, we've got a little Kratos here. It's quite grimy and uh, he's a bit more of a dark red compared to the old Rhino there, as you can see. I would suggest when you're finished with it, you want to stick it in the air and cupboard for a while so it becomes nice and dry. But at that stage, if you want to seal it, you can and just go mad. It is still quite forgiving even a few hours after you finished it. So as you can see here, I'm giving a bit of a, uh, a clean because I, I found an area which I'd missed. So get a bit of white spirits back to it and uh, yeah, it activates it straight away again. As mentioned earlier in the video, if you did just want to spray paint it with uh, the Mephiston Red Rattle Can and then paint it on Anger and Clear Red, you can. Yeah, then you can just pick up the transfers later on then hit it with a few coats of um, Pledge. Then after that, do the oil buff. And I don't think it'll be too much different in the results at the end. Anyway, I uh, hope you really enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. And um, hopefully we do more of these because we've got a fair few legions out there and they all need to be grim and dark. Anyway, thanks.